The triangle inequality theorem says that the sum of any two lengths of a triangle has to be greater than the third side. The triangle inequality theorem gives us a way to decide if we have a triangle or not. In example one, we have what looks to be a triangle. It has three sides. The problem is, if we tried to draw this triangle to scale, if we made this side eight long, and this side two long, and this side four long, these two small sides would not be big enough to connect to make a triangle. Two plus four is less than eight. So in this first example, even though we have a triangle that looks, we have a shape that looks like a triangle, when it's drawn to scale, we actually don't have a triangle. In the second example, again we have a shape that looks like a triangle. It has three sides. But if we try to draw this shape to scale, if we make this side 10, we make this side 4, and this side 6, we end up with a straight line. Again, we don't have a triangle here. In order to have a triangle, the two smallest sides added together have to be greater than the third. If they're less than or equal to, we don't have a triangle. Another application of this theorem is to figure out the possible values for a third side of a triangle. So if we know two sides are 13 and 18, to figure out this third side, we need to do some algebra. Well, we know that any two sides added together have to be bigger than the third. So 13 plus x has to be greater than 18. And 18 plus x has to be greater than 13. These two together have to be greater than this. And finally, these two together, 13 and 18, have to be greater than x. Since we don't know if x is the biggest or the smallest side of this triangle, we have to set up three different inequalities and solve for x in each inequality. Now I'm going to switch this one around so x is less than 31. Now one of these we can throw out. This example here, where x is greater than negative 5, we can throw out. We're working with shapes where all the side lengths are going to be positive. We're not going to deal with negative side lengths. So the two values that I'm concerned with are here and here x has to be greater than 5 and less than 31. So I want to link these two into one big long inequality. Of all of these values, x, 5, and 31, 5 is the smallest value, and 31 is the largest value, with x being in the middle and x has to be less than 31, and it has to be greater than 5. So my final answer looks like this. x has to be a value between 5 and 31. So could I have an x value that's 7? Yeah. Could I have an x value that's 5? Well, no, because 5 is not greater than 5. But if I make x just slightly bigger than that, like 5.1, yes. All of the x values between 5 and 31 are possible values for this third side. The last two theorems deal with how to order the sides and the angles of a triangle. If we look at example number four, it's pretty easy to list the sides in order from smallest to biggest. AC is going to be the smallest, followed by BC, followed by AB. But now I'm going to use theorem 5.10 and 5.11 to figure out my angles. 
if one side of a triangle is longer than the other side, then the angle opposite the longer side is larger than the angle opposite the shorter side. That's a mouthful, but what it's essentially saying is, eight is the shortest side, so the angle opposite of eight is going to be the short, or the smallest angle. So if AC is the long, or the shortest side, angle B will be the smallest angle, followed by the angle opposite of the middle side, angle A, and finally, angle C. So if I know the order of the side lengths, I can figure out the angle lengths in order from smallest to biggest. In example number five, I know two angles. So I know E, angle E is gonna be bigger than angle F. The question is, what about angle D? Where does angle D fit into this mix? Well, to figure out angle D, all three angles have to be 180. So angle D has to be 40 degrees. So I can list my angles in order from smallest to biggest. Angle D, followed by angle F, followed by angle E. And if I look at theorem 5.1, it's saying the same thing as angle 5.10, but with angles instead of sides. So my smallest angle is 40 degrees. That's going to tell me about my smallest side. So 40, opposite of 40, is EF. So EF is my smallest side. F is my middle angle. Opposite of F is DE. So DE is my middle side length. And E is my biggest angle. So opposite of E is DF, my biggest side. 